For background, aside from the 10 years that I lived in California, between the ages of 20 and 30, I've lived in Okinawa, Japan for most of my life. Japan is known to be one of the safest countries in the world, and as someone who has lived in both Japan and America, I can confirm this. However, today, I'd like to share with you the time where, as a child, I came to question just how safe Japan really is for a little girl. At the time of this story, the year was around 1996. Time period matters, and you'll see why shortly. It's most likely what saved my life the more that I think about it. I was around seven or eight at the time, and I was hanging out at my mom's pharmacy, which I did often while she was working. Her job was a convenient five minute walk to my grandma's house. So as a little kid, I would walk back and forth from the pharmacy to my grandmother's based on who I wanted to spend time with. Now, when you live on the island of Okinawa, it's kind of hard to not notice all of the Americans that inhabit the island. This is due to the large military presence in the Pacific. Funny enough, being half American such as myself, I had always found a sense of familiarity with all of the Americans that I saw on a day-to-day -day basis. This particular day, evening was beginning to approach, and so was dinner time. So my mom suggested that I walk over to my grandma's house for dinner. I agreed and casually started to make my usual walk from my mom's job to my grandma's house. The street that I walked was busy, cars constantly zooming past, and considering that it was the afternoon rush hour, there were more cars than usual. I was maybe about halfway to my grandma's when out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a black car slow down and pace alongside me. At first, I thought nothing of it. Parking spaces in Japan are limited, and the road that I walked on was lined with different businesses, so I just figured that whoever was in the black car was just slowing down to park their car on the side of the road while they ran into one of the stores. I wasn't expecting what happened next. I heard the window roll down, and then I heard a man's voice call out to me. Hey girl! I wasn't expecting to hear English, so it jolted me, and I looked up. That's when I saw an American man, still in his military uniform, who was slightly leaning over the passenger side seat. He kept looking at me, but his eyes would occasionally dart to the front of his car to make sure that he didn't hit anything at a slow speed. I stopped, and he stopped his car. I was wondering if he was going to ask me for directions, or something like that, but I didn't say a word to him. I just stared. In my own little way, I think I was studying him, trying to feel out his energy. He was smiling, but something about him was giving me bad vibes. He waited for a few seconds to see if I would speak, but since I didn't, he continued. You don't know me, but I'm friends with your dad, he said with that same smile. He asked me to give you a ride home. This confused me because even at nighttime, my parents allowed me to walk back and forth between my mom's job and my grandmother's house. After all, it was a busy street and no more than a five minute walk. They rarely ever drove me to and fro. Plus, where I was standing at that moment, I was nearly halfway there. I told the man that I'm okay and that I didn't need a ride since my destination was right around the corner. That's when the smile on his lips began to waver. I'm sorry, but your dad insists that I take you, he said, trying to keep a calm and happy voice. He even said that we could go pick up some ice cream. This is when the year that this happened comes into play. About a year before this, in 1995, three U.S. military servicemen rented a van and kidnapped a local 12-year-old Okinawan girl. They beat her, duct taped her eyes and mouth shut, bound her hands, and then they took turns assaulting her. This incident caused an uproar with the Okinawans and created massive tension between the US military and Okinawan citizens. There wasn't a single man, woman, or child who didn't know of this case. Even though I was young at the time and didn't really understand the gravity of the situation to the fullest extent, I still knew enough about the story that it made me cautious of strangers. 
I shook my head and declined the man's offer. The smile completely disappeared from his face as the anger began to show. Get in the car, you little shit, he growled. At that moment, I needed no further confirmation that something was wrong, and I took off running. Since I grew up in that area, I knew it like the back of my hand. I darted into a short alley nearby, in between a karaoke place and a rotisserie chicken shop. I ran to the street on the other side, which was the same street that my grandma's house was on. I now know that the guy wasn't going to chase me in broad daylight, especially being in his military uniform. After the incident with the 12-year-old local girl, him chasing me would have raised immediate suspicion. There's no way he would have risked it, but at that time, I didn't even try to look back. I just assumed that he was following me and right on my tail. I ran as fast as my little legs could. I quickly found myself out of breath, and it felt like the sides of my stomach were about to split open. I was maybe two blocks from my grandma's house, and yet it felt so far away. Eventually, I got there, yanked open the front door, and ran into the house, forgetting to take my shoes off before collapsing into my grandma's arms. Later that night, my dad came to pick me up, and that's when I told him what happened. I was just hoping that it was a misunderstanding and that my dad had sent a friend for whatever reason. But the moment I told him what happened, his face fell. There was a mixture of fear and anger, and he hugged me so tightly. Being an American, especially being associated with the military, was difficult at the time due to the tension created from three idiot servicemen from the year prior. My father's biggest pet peeve was the US military and their affiliates doing stupid shit and making the rest of the foreigners look bad. I don't know if my dad did anything with the information I gave him, and if he did, it didn't go anywhere, at least not that I know of. I've walked back and forth from my grandma's house to my mom's pharmacy many times before this incident and since, and beyond that one time, I never saw that guy in his black car again. Although this happened nearly 30 years ago, I still feel compelled to say, because I feel it in my heart, dude in the black car, let's not meet again. When I was a kid, my family and I stayed in a mobile home park in central Wisconsin. While it was parked on a semi-main street in our small town, there was a set of railroad tracks directly behind the property. This was a popular railway, as it carried cargo trains and commuter trains all throughout the state. And it even had a stop at a Wally World theme park about 20 miles north of us. I dropped that last part in there for anybody that may be local. You might just be able to figure out where I was at when all this occurred. I was a teenager in the eighth grade at the time, with no car or transportation other than a bike. The railroad tracks behind our house went in a straight line, leading directly to Walmart. So if I were to bike to Walmart on the streets, it would take me about the same time as if I walked straight down the tracks. So more often than not, I would walk as I was never really a big fan of riding bikes and I've had back issues from a young age. On this day in particular, I decided to head to Walmart for dumb kid stuff shortly before the sun was about to set. This detail will come into play a little bit later. Basically, I went to the store and got distracted just looking around, bought some food and drink along with some trading cards, but left as the sun was fully setting. It's about a 20 to 25 minute walk home, and I decided once more to head down the tracks again. At about the 10 minute mark, it was getting pretty dark, and I was generally a fearful and anxious child due to my autism. I was scared of the dark until I was about 14, and would often have nightmares or see things that weren't there in my closet or dark corners of the room. So as it became too dark to see that night, I was beginning to get extremely nervous and hypervigilant. Five minutes later, I could swear I was hearing footsteps crunching on the rocks lining these tracks. Footsteps that weren't mine. I stopped a few times to listen and confirm someone was walking towards me from a significant distance away. I couldn't see them at this point, 
due to the darkness around me and lack of lighting across the railroad tracks. I had no phone or flashlight on me of any kind. At this point, I started to freak out internally. At first, I didn't know what to do, but as the sound of the footsteps got closer and closer, I decided to call out and let them know that I was coming towards them. I stopped as I did this and said something along the lines of, is someone out there? While I know this might seem silly as an adult, but I was used to my brain playing tricks on me in the darkness, and I was convinced that I might have been hearing things. To my question, I heard no response. But at this point, the footsteps were getting closer. Still difficult to distinguish over my own, but now I was sure that I heard them. So I stopped. The footsteps continued for a brief moment before they stopped too. I called out once more. Hello? Is anyone there? No response again. At this point, I was still prepubescent and I had a child's voice. I feel like any reasonable adult would have responded and said yes, or yeah, I'm just walking by, or whatever, as I had genuine noticeable fear in my voice. After I received no response again, I did my best to convince myself that I was just imagining it and continued on my journey, at this point being just under 10 minutes from home. I heard them again, footsteps coming closer as soon as I began walking. At this point, fear absolutely took hold. I started yelling and making whooping sounds, thinking it might be some sort of animal. I yelled things like, I know you're there and I have a knife, which was absolute bullshit, but thought it might encourage this person to respond, yet still nothing. A few times as I was speaking, I would hear the footsteps stop again. Finally, about three to four minutes later, after stopping multiple times and hearing these footsteps stop and start, I start to see the silhouette of a man materialize out of the darkness. He had on blue jeans, and a dark hoodie with the hood completely masking his face from a distance. I was instantly relieved for whatever reason. Relieved to know that I wasn't crazy maybe. But I began verbally vomiting to this guy that I was just scared and I didn't know that he was on the tracks for sure. And again, he didn't respond. As we were passing each other, I looked for any reason why he wouldn't be able to hear me or respond. I didn't notice any earbuds, headphone cables, or anything that would keep him from hearing me. Because he didn't respond, I was eyeing him warily as we approached and locked eyes. I'll never forget that chill that ran down my spine. He was staring at me coldly and blankly, with a type of menacing look in his eyes, almost as if he was thinking about what he was going to do. He had his hands shoved in his pockets, and as we passed, he looked like he was going to pull something out of them in his right hand. I was a scrawny kid, and even though I have back problems, I was fast as hell. I didn't need to actually see what he was going to pull out. I just took off. From then on, going down the tracks at a full sprint, and everything else seemed to blur. I tripped and fell twice, as well as soaked myself in mud when I tried to get across the small ditch separating the track from the trailer park before I finally reached my front door. I'm a little ashamed that I never told my mom what had happened, but I'm a little proud that I never walked on those tracks again at night. After typing out this story and reading it through again, I thought I would describe the tracks just a little bit better for context. They themselves are on an elevated hill next to the trailers, and you can either walk a minute in the wrong direction to get on the main road that I live on, or you can cut through this one small spot where some people had put a board down for the exact purpose of getting across the ditch and onto the tracks. The board was broken in half and partially submerged, so it was kind of like you had to jump and land on the board with one foot and then kick off to the other side. The ditch itself is maybe three feet across, so it's not a particularly huge jump, but it always had nasty standing water in it. Once you get on the tracks, there's this super long stretch with absolutely no way off other than venturing onto private property of a factory that the railway delivers goods to. 
which you could get in trouble for trespassing on. Then there's a junction about 20 minutes down, and another five minutes from there, that's where the Walmart is. Due to the fact of this long stretch, I just couldn't get off the tracks when I ran away. This landscape is also what kept me almost within arm's reach of this guy. The one that I could hear, but not see, until it was almost too late. I don't know what he was planning or plotting. In fact, I don't know if he was planning anything at all. While I have a hard time believing this myself, maybe I was a sketchy one to him. But as a kid walking down these dark railroad tracks after sundown, I realized that I was at a disadvantage. I'm glad that I had the sense to run when I did, and didn't continue at my walking pace once this guy was behind me. While I'm sure there are much more horrifying stories on this subreddit, living through this one as a kid definitely inhabited my nightmares for quite some time. This story happened to me several months ago, and if I'm being real, it still freaks me out. I work at a hotel in my town and was driving my husband's truck into work as he was taking mine to the shop to get serviced. My husband has a very large truck and I only drive it when I absolutely have to. When I pull into the side parking lot of the hotel, I notice the entire lot is covered in snow and no one can see the lines for the spots. So I begin looking like a moron and try to park in what I hope is a spot backing up and moving forward several times. When I finally park, I get out of the truck and grab my backpack when I hear someone yelling from the sidewalk located behind the parking lot. Hey, you need to learn how to park. I'm a bit embarrassed, but just close the truck up, lock it, and begin walking towards the front of the building. Now, the hotel has a side entrance for employees, but it takes a code and I have a shitty memory so I just walk to the front and go through the main entrance. That's when I hear the guy yelling again. Did you hear me, bitch? I walk faster, not saying a word, but I do take a peek behind me. And to my horror, this guy is now following me. I keep walking, but that's when I call back. Please just leave me alone. I need to get to work. Before I can reach the corner of the building and make my way to the entrance, this guy grabs my arm and spins me around. I'm never going to forget what this guy looked like as long as I live. He wore dark clothes with a torn up winter coat. His eyes were bloodshot and he smelled like a combination of cigarettes and whiskey. My guess is that he must have been drunk, but he didn't slur at all when he was speaking. He just yelled right in my face. You're coming with me. The guy began dragging me back towards my truck and I tried to pull my arm away from him. Let go of me, I screamed. Give me the keys. We're taking a drive. I begin yelling for help, and that's when his grip on my arm got tighter. I'm a 26-year-old woman, not skinny, but a lot smaller than this guy. He was dragging me easily, and the snow on the ground just made my feet slide along as he pulled me. Someone help, please but no one was near us, so I kept fighting to get away from this guy. I prayed with all my might that there would be guests that could possibly hear me, but it was our slow season, so most likely there was no one in the rooms on that side of the building. As the guy pulls, he turns back to glare at me. Shut the fuck up and give me the keys. Now, I was carrying my backpack on one shoulder as it was big and bulky from my uniform and shoes inside. I quickly slipped the strap down my arm, grab it, and swung it right into his face. The impact caused the guy to let go of me, and I ran for my life to the front doors. I heard the guy scream, but ignored him. I was way too scared to look back this time. I ran inside and all the way to the employee locker rooms. When I finally calmed down enough, I went up to the front desk to talk to security. Sadly, there are no cameras on that side of the building, so nothing was recorded. Security called the cops, and I made a report. The cops informed the general manager of the hotel that they needed to seriously consider security cameras on that side of the building, 
as drunks and druggies were known to be in the area. Police took a description of the guy and said they would keep an eye out for him. My manager apologized like crazy about the incident, but I told him that it wasn't his fault. I did, however, ask the security guard to follow me out so I could check on my truck, and thankfully, it was fine. The security guard promised to make more rounds outside, especially that early in the morning. Before anyone asks, yes, after all of this, I told my husband. He drove me to work the next few days, and I was happy to see that security was keeping their word that they would make rounds outside that time of day. They still currently are. I'm driving myself to work again, but I don't get out of my truck until I see the security guard. He watches to make sure that I get inside okay. I think he's also hoping to catch the guy if he ever comes back. I'm also getting pepper spray and maybe a knife. Can never be too careful, I suppose. Sadly, I haven't heard back from the police yet, and I may not ever. Hopefully the guy was scared off from coming back to the area. Or maybe he tried to go back, and the security guard scared him off. Either way, I hope to never see that guy again, unless he's in handcuffs and being taken off to jail. No, he didn't get my backpack. I should have specified, but I held on to it while I ran away. I'm glad I got a good hit in, because if I missed or didn't hit him that hard, he would have easily caught me again. Running with that bag is awkward, and in the moment, I just didn't think to drop it and leave it. If there's any other update, I'll definitely post it here, but for now, creepy kidnapper, let's never meet again. <laughs>